Hi, I'm Hugh Whitmore. Welcome to today's Bible teaching. Today I'm going to be describing how Jesus rebukes and rejects Paul in the book of Revelation. If you follow me, you know that this portion of my life that I dedicate to teaching the Word of God on YouTube, I call a church without Paul. And that's because I feel strongly that Paul is a false apostle put into the Bible falsely by nefarious people, but for nefarious reasons. And those reasons are to destroy the kingdom teachings of Jesus. Most of today's lecture will be condensed from my book, The Moment Time Stopped, which you can get at Amazon, Kobo, iBooks, or Barnes & Noble. So let's get to the teaching. And it starts in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2, where Jesus is speaking to the church in Ephesus. And he says, I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and found them to be false. This obviously is speaking of Paul, who is really the only false apostle of note in the Bible. And this is what I did. I tested and tested the scriptures over and over. And Paul never seemed real to me. I wanted to believe in the entire Bible, but Paul didn't add up. So many things were contradictory that he said. He contradicts God. He contradicts Jesus. He contradicts himself, taking both sides of arguments. And I tested Paul. I found him to be false. And I'm hoping through today's teaching and others that I have that you'll learn to do the same because it's very important for the return of Jesus, that Paul be taken out of the worship of Christians. Now, Paul is a false apostle for many reasons, but the biggest ones are that there are only two ways you could become an apostle of Jesus. The first was if you were directly chosen by him, and then one of the apostles, of course, Judas Iscariot, was a traitor and he turned Jesus over to the Romans and the Jews for his death. And he, he, Judas, killed himself later. And the remaining 11 apostles needed to correct that and bring another person back on to have 12 because the number 12 is very important. Jesus promised the 12 apostles that eventually they would sit on 12 thrones in heaven judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So this was very important. And the qualifications for this for the apostles to choose another apostle were set out in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 21 to 24. So let's go there. There it says, starting in 21, So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. Now, Paul didn't have any of these qualifications. Paul never met Jesus. He never studied with Jesus. He never studied under Jesus. He never heard him speak. And he certainly wasn't a witness to the resurrection. He wasn't there when Jesus went back up to heaven. And he never even learned from the other apostles. So, Paul wasn't chosen by Jesus. And he wasn't chosen by the, the apostles Jesus told. So Paul could not have been an apostle. So let's go on with Jesus' teachings and get into continuing with Revelation 2. We go back where verse 3, Revelation 2 verse 3, where Jesus continued to speak, saying, I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary. Speaking again to the church there at Ephesus. And he says the way I feel, frankly, which is, I feel I'm enduring patiently for the name of Jesus, but I'm trying not to grow weary. But it is very difficult to take this position at this time in history that Paul is false. More people are doing it, and it's good to see publicly because this is so vital. And frankly, it's exciting at this time in history because if more people do this, I really think it will help bring back Jesus sooner. It is tiring and lonely, 
and the response is kind of low, but I'm enduring patiently. And only those who really know God and really know the Bible are going to understand that Paul is false. So that's, again, I hope you can come to the same conclusion I have, because rejecting Paul is certainly what will bring Jesus back with the kingdom. So going on with the teaching, staying in Revelation chapter 2, now we're on to verse 4. Jesus again says to the church, But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. The first works, the works at first, Jesus is referring to, were the kingdom teachings of Jesus that were replaced by the false testimony of Paul. Because, as you know, I call myself a church without Paul. And I hope more people follow that. And I hope there are plenty of churches without Paul. But there was a church without Paul at one time in history. And that was when Jesus was here on the earth and teaching. There was Jesus and his kingdom teachings. Paul hadn't written anything yet. And Jesus was the only thing you needed to know to get to heaven, to understand what God needed from us. And and from God and through Jesus to get to heaven. And Paul later came and changed that completely. And Jesus here in Revelation 2, verse 4, is telling people to get back to that, to the love you had at first, the love for Jesus. Repent and do the works you did at first. Paul comes along and he introduces this crazy thing that there's something physically called grace, almost like magic dust, that gets you to heaven, that gets you saved and to heaven. It's just not true. Everything Jesus said leaned towards what God said, which is that to get to heaven and to bring back the the kingdom, it's by your efforts and by your works. You know, a funny thing happened to me because I espouse this view, which is the truth, and it's all throughout the Bible, and it's supported in the Old Testament. It's supported by Jesus's teachings. It's supported by the the epistle of James and of Jude, and it's supported in the book of Revelation. It's only Paul and sort of Peter in his writings that support this concept of grace. And a guy wrote me on my YouTube channel, and he said, works, 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 Hugh, you sound like a Catholic. Uh, I guess as if that's a death sentence. But I I wrote him back, and I told him, well, I'm not a Catholic. But I asked him, but do you think that Jesus was a Catholic? Because the only method of salvation Jesus ever spoke of was repenting and doing works unto God. And he never got back to me, but I thought that was kind of funny because the truth stands clear. It doesn't matter whether you're a Catholic or a Protestant. Uh, Both churches, by the way, teach Paul and teach him falsely. And that's what leads people away from the kingdom teachings of Jesus. So don't go away from the truth of Jesus and move away from the lies of Paul because he only leads people away from the truth of Jesus's kingdom teachings. So the teaching here continues. Let's move on. We're going now to Revelation 2 verse 9 where Jesus continues. This is just one more thing Jesus says to rebuke Paul. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Well, that's Jesus referring to Paul, who was a Jew, of course, but wasn't a Jew in the sense that he didn't worship God. God called the Jews to worship him, but they rejected him as Paul did, because Paul was in the synagogue of Satan. That's what the Pharisees were. They were Satan worshipers, devil worshipers, worshipers of Lucifer, and that's what Paul was doing. And that's why we know he's nefarious. And this is why Jesus calls him this. So now we move to a summing up of today's lesson, and we get to Revelation 3, chapter 3, verse 9, where Jesus says something very telling about Paul. He's talk- Jesus is talking to the church again. And he says, Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you. This is Jesus talking to Paul again, to people who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. That is Paul. And Jesus is saying that he will make 
those who lie bow down before him to know that he loved us, those of us who loved him and followed his commands. Because Jesus is telling us what he died for, that he died so that we may worship life. We worship love and life, the love of Jesus and and the life that he reaffirmed by overcoming death. Those who worship the devil worship death. They worship confusion, injury, and death, but mainly death. And that is what Paul worships. And that is what Paul is doing by sapping away the energy that God needs from us through our worship, by tearing people away from from the kingdom teachings of Jesus. And it's Paul and his teachings that have kept Jesus from coming back for these 2,000 years. And we need to get back to the kingdom teachings of Jesus, forget Paul, and, and worship openly the, the strict teachings of Jesus. And over time, this will embolden the church, empower the church. Worship energy will go to heaven. God will overcome Satan. The kingdom will come back, and we'll have a glorious ending to this awful time, this 2,000 years uh, since Jesus was born and this actually since the Garden of Eden, which is about 6,000 years in Bible time since Satan took over the world. So Paul is false. Jesus rebukes him and proves it. And he also rejects him in the book of Revelation. Read it for yourself and see if you feel the same way I do and move toward not just a church without Paul, but a world without Paul that will bring back the glorious kingdom with Jesus.